everybody. Welcome along to Watercolour Wednesday. How are we all doing today? Sorry I'm a little bit late. I had trouble with my camera and the light. The light was too bright and we couldn't see what was going on on the paper. So 19 of you along. Someone say hello. Let me see that the chat's working. So today we're going to do something a little bit fun, a little bit different. Um, and we're doing Camilla Moo. So this is Camilla Moo. This is my baby girl. Um, and I did her quite a while ago with some other characters. Hi, Karen. Um, George, there's Lonesome George. There's Horatio Hare. <laughs> there's Henrietta. She's at too many worms. So, but we're going to focus on Camilla today. Let me just move my chat down so I can see you. Oh, there you all are. Now I can see you all. Hi, Christine, Joe, Louise, Carol. It's a nice, fun one. Watercolour Wednesday, but we're using ink. But don't worry, you can use watercolour if you don't have ink. Okay, so let me tell you, as usual, what I'm using. Hello, Sarah, Linda and everyone. Oh, how lovely, Carol. So, here's Camilla. I'm worried about the light messing up, so I'm not gonna keep her too, I've got lots of white on the table, you see, and it affects the cameras, so what can you do? Anyway, I hope you're all well, and you're all raring to go. So I'm using my normal watercolor paper, it's 300 GSM, and it's cold pressed, so it has some texture. And I'm using Indian ink. Now, as I say, if you haven't got Indian ink, you could use normal ink, blue ink, whatever ink you have, or just use watercolour. Indian ink is somewhat different in that Indian ink has a gum in it, okay? There's a natural gum that occurs in Indian ink, Hello, CJ. Um, so although it reacts much like watercolour, it's not able to be removed once it's dry. OK, so it's dangerous in that respect. So there's my ink. I've got my pencil because I haven't sketched her out yet. You could use fine liner pens as well with this. I'm going to use my dip pen. OK, now I sell all oh, there's white on it. I was using white ink the other day and it's still on my nib. I don't want that. Anyway, <laughs> so I'm going to have a go with my nib pen. I've got sets of these come with five different nibs. Oh, going to the dentist. Oh, poor you. Hi, Tracy. Sorry, I'm just trying to get this white ink off my nib. Anyway, I don't think it will matter. So fine liner pens or a dip pen will be fine. And my usual brushes size 12 and size 6 from the set that I sell on my website. Now, although this one's quite fun and easy to do, hello Lee, um, you can take ink that step further and do more detailed work with it. And I'll show you some of those as we go along. Um, I've got my pencil, my razor, my pots of water, which people are going mad for. Um, I've had to get some of these in and I know some of you have already ordered your fish in a jar, um, your daisy or your poppy in a jar, which are painted in resin, three dimensional layers, hand painted. Um, so they are now available on my website, if anyone's still interested, okay? Four inches diameter. Um, yeah, and they'll come with either a fish, a daisy or a poppy. Check them out. It was really funny, guys. Sorry, I know, I will start drawing in a minute. But I only got these out and put them on the desk because I thought they'd be a bit of fun. And then everybody wanted them. <laughs> so I've had to order 20. I've only got 20. And I've got orders for about 10 so far. So if you do want one, I'm going to start making them next week. They won't be delivered until the end of March because they take days and days and days to do because I do a layer paint it, have to let the resin set, next day do another layer. So there's a lot of work in them. 
You've ordered the poppy. Yes, Martina, I saw that. You're the only one that's ordered a poppy so far. Okay, so let's sketch our cow. I'm going to keep her in shot if I can. And generally, when I'm doing a fun character like this, I'll start in the middle of the face and put that nose in. Okay. Now, you could go straight to ink. Coming round. It's really like a bone shape, the cow's nose. It's a little bit curvy at the ends. I'm hoping this is showing up. Yes, it is. Good, good. I'm using a 2B pencil, but I recommend you use a HB or a H and keep it light. Okay, coming across the top of the nose. So I'm just doing this by sight, no gridding out, it's a bit of fun, doesn't really matter if it goes wonky. Be a wonky cow instead of a wonky donkey. So we've got that nose shape, as I say, it looks a bit like a dog's bone or a bow. And she's got her tongue poking out, the cheeky Camilla. Don't ask me where the name Camilla come from. I haven't got a clue. I name all of my characters. Hi, Jean. Good to have you along. Hello, Helen. And now I'm coming into her tongue. And then a bit of her top lip. Look where it starts and joins. And coming into the bottom jaw. As I say, don't worry about, just sketch nice and loosely, have some fun. And it's good to sketch, it's good to sketch it in pencil first, because if you do make a mistake, you can rub it out. Okay, so we have a nose of sorts, a tongue. Let's not forget the flower hanging out of her mouth. And you can do any flower you want. So you will need a little speck of watercolour. Just a very simple daisy, nothing like the daisy we did last week. Just very illustrative. Little daisy coming out of her mouth. Just a bit of fun. That's rubbish. That's rubbish, Eunice. Sorry, guys, I, I am annoyed at my daisy, so I'm going to do it again. There we go. I knew I needed my rubber. So let's do that again. Petal. I had a big gap in my petals. I don't want that. Big gap. Just bring those petals round. You could do any flower you want. You could do a rose. I've got some with roses. And these characters were created as part of my, I call them my romantic collection. Because all of them, Horatio's looking, they're all looking for love. So Horatio's got a red rose. Lonesome George has a yellow peony and Henrietta's got a poppy. There are others in the collection as well, but they're the ones that I grabbed. Okay, nostrils. Let's talk nostrils. Their nostrils are very high up, okay, and quite wide on the nose. So let's pop a nostril in. They don't have to be absolutely symmetrical. And the other side. They're a bit like um, commas, aren't they? There we go. Let's get a big nostrils in. A nice, easy one today, I thought. But open up your world to the possibilities that you have with ink. I'm just going to roughly mark where her black splodges are under her neck. And she originally came about, all of my characters came from photos of real animals and I just simplified them. Okay, so let's go up her face now. Just coming alongside her nose, little bit of cheek. She's very cheeky. And coming round to the eye. And the other side, just coming from the edge of her nose up. Looking how high up this comes. And then we have these kind of triangle sections that come in for her eyes. Triangles at the side. Now look at the gap between the nose and where the eyes start. You want that roughly in the right place. And don't forget the eyes bulge out at the side. So we can see the edge of the eyeball. Steph. Hello, Steph. Your first time with me. 
you've never used ink wow i love ink to be honest i love all art forms um and watercolor wednesdays obviously came about because of lockdown and it's just my way of giving something free to you guys out there and get you cracking on with some painting you know anything's possible and some people haven't touched their art stuff since school so come on guys let's fill our walls with wonderful artwork that we create in my free lessons now wouldn't that be wonderful actually i'll ask a favor for those of you that have been with me for some time i would love to see photos of the work you've done displayed in your home okay send some pictures on here love to see them or message me i don't mind okay just putting those eyes in and then coming up her head slopes up and over and the other side up in up she's got a bumpy head and she's got that lovely mountain on the top that little top knot at the top doesn't she look odd without ears <laughs> your first time too jane excellent welcome along jane tell your friends tell everyone okay she looks really odd without ears i have to say i'm just going to take a sip of my tea because i'm gasping i've been running around all morning mm. from denmark and your first time with ink is it your first time watching me live i wonder oh sorry guys there's someone at the door one second sorry guys a delivery i told you it's been a mad mad morning i don't know what i was saying okay there's a sign on my door that says do not disturb filming in progress never mind so i'm just bringing that pattern down her nose and it's really taking the bridge of her nose back from the nose and then a little bit just a little bit of markings for her top knot and the first time with watercolor oh wonderful wonderful your mum's on too hello mum you can use aquafine watercolor ink you can use watercolor um the reason i use indian ink is i just love the properties of indian ink i love the fact that when it's dry it's permanent um so yeah and it has that kind of little brownie tone to it kim another first timer haven't touched art for 20 years until now good for you kim and i bet it makes you feel better i bet you lose yourself in whatever you're doing whether it turns out good or bad it doesn't matter it's the process it's the taking part that matters so just bringing her ear out that side and the other side now she looks better she looked a bit like an otter before look how low down look where the ears join the face just under the eye and just above the nose okay so look those clues are there coming round those big floppy ears and just indicating where the edge of the skin on the ear is oh is she cute so before i touch my ink i'm just going to adjust any pencil lines i don't like just a little adjustment there i haven't stretched my paper beforehand because i'm not using copious amounts of water today okay first time watching me ah oh, i've read that one i have to look up a now and again to see what you're saying what you're talking about you might be talking about me I think I'm okay with that. Oh, I've forgotten something. Her bottom. So we've got her bottom poking out around the side, coming down towards her back legs. And we have a big brown black splodge on her back. And there we are. Okay, that's the drawing done. 
Easy, keeping it simple. Oh, Diane, that's wonderful. Confidence, that's what it's about. You know, just getting out, trying, picking up those art materials you might not have touched, as Kim says, in 20 years, and having a go. You'll surprise yourself. There's lots of TV programmes on at the moment. Um, anyone watching Grayson? I love Grayson's show. It's just fabulous. And again, he picks artworks from people that haven't painted. They're not necessarily professionals. Right, let's talk to you about the ink then. And as I say, you could use a fine liner pen. You could use a fine liner pen or if you've got one, a dip pen. So I'm gonna use my dip pen. I'm gonna go straight into my ink. And I'm just gonna sketch the outline over the pencil lines that I've already drawn, okay? And I'm keeping my marks very sketchy, broken lines, very rough and ready. Now this is actually, um, as I said, this pen I'm using, this dip pen, is one, a set that I've recently stock on my website. So if you wanna go, and I sell the ink too. So little 60 mil jars that will last you ages. Um, I do find using a nib more fun than a fine liner pen. Just watching my hand that I don't drop in the ink. Now, up the top of the nose, I want it very sketchy. Oh, none of my lines are solid. They're broken. They're sketchy, just like using your pencil. Coming in around the tongue. And the bottom lip. As I say, just going over, loosely sketching in. Now, her chin's going to be hairy. So I'm breaking up her chin line with lots of dashes to make it look hairy. Fab. Actually, I'm not going to mark in her blo her blotches, okay? I'm gonna leave those for the ink and brush. Coming around her back end again, breaking up that line. If you want to do a solid line, you can, but I just find a broken line looks more fun. You remember to draw in today before I know. Excellent. So the pictures are always published. There is an artist who does live, um, he does paid for watercolour classes. I'm not going to tell you his name. <laughs> He's my competition. But he publishes classes and he doesn't put a picture up of what they're doing. He just puts a description. We're doing a windmill in a field. I mean... And he does get lots of people, because he's been going 100 years, joining his classes. Even I joined once, just to be nosy. Uh, <laughs> but he doesn't put a picture up first of what they're going to be doing. I wouldn't book a class if I didn't know what the outcome was supposed to look like. I mean, it's just odd, don't you think? Is it me? Is, is it odd? Shall I publish classes and not put a picture up and just put a description. How many people would turn up? Not many, I think. There we go. So I'm just going over my lines and chatting on to you guys about stuff. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, come nearly there and then we can crack open the ink properly and start applying it with water. Round the eyeball. Look, it's important that you get the eyeballs right on the edge of her face. Protruding out her eyelid and some lovely long eyelashes. Oh, she's so beautiful. Yeah, Carol, exactly. Exactly, Carol. I don't, I really, it baffles me. It really does. He gets hundreds of people a class, hundreds. Um, 
well I say hundreds, when I joined one of his classes it was around 100 people that were on there. So obviously they trust him, they've been following him some time, but I still find it bizarre. And all they can do is copy every mark that he makes. Because I joined one of the classes, he doesn't, yeah, it's like buying a car without seeing it. Um, he doesn't even send you a reference picture once you sign up. So I thought, oh, perhaps when you sign up, you get a reference picture sent. So you've got nothing to work from other than watching his every mark. Um, yeah, that's my moan. That's my moan for the day. I feel better now. I'm glad you guys agree. Yeah, you need to see it. You need to know what you're going to be drawing, what you're attempting. So I always publish for my paid for classes, the same as my Facebook Live free demos. I put a picture of the artwork that I've done up as the advert. And when you book, I send you a reference photo. Sometimes, because I've done the painting a long time ago, I might not have the exact reference picture to hand, so I'll find something similar. Um, but yeah, you always have something as a guide. So getting her nostrils in. Okay. Oh, flower. I forgot the flower. Now, Indian ink. If you guys are using Indian ink like me, you do need to give it a moment to sink into the paper. I'll show you on a scrap of paper. Let me just finish my daisy. The stalk. Okay, that's my nib pen, that can be washed. Now, a, a tip for you guys, when you are using Indian ink, please wash out your tools properly. Remember I said at the beginning, Oh, you know who I'm talking about, Anne. You know, don't say his name. Don't you dare. <laughs> Defo need to see what you're doing. I'm trying to see what you're answering, Tracy. Posted on you. Yeah, I'll paste the, pic the picture. And you can post your pictures on my page afterwards. Um, 200. Ah. You're just making me really cross now. <laughs> okay, so yes, what, I, what was I saying? You need to make sure you wash your tools out because Indian ink has gum in it. Um, if it gets into your bristles of your brushes, it will make them all sticky and they'll gel together. So after you're painted with Indian ink, give them a really good wash in warm soapy water and that will get rid of the gum. Don't leave them with ink in them, okay? <laughs> okay, on with the ink then. So, I'm going to, you with a dry brush, just take some ink, pure ink, and put in my mixing palette, just a couple of drops. Wash my brush out. And now, I'm gonna pick up some clean water and pop in one, two, three of my mixing wells. I don't want to run out. I'm putting quite a lot of water in there. Now what we're going to do, we're going to go straight into the ink, the pure ink, and pop it in the first puddle. So we're making a nice dark wash. Wash your brush out again. And then go from that puddle to the next. And that will give you a slightly lighter colour. And then the third time from that one into the light one. So it will give us a very warm, just a bit more. Okay, so we've got our, whoops, I'm knocking everything over. We've got our pure ink, our dark wash, our, our medium wash and a light. Let me just grab a scrap of paper out my drawer. Oh, goodness. Come on, Eunice. Sorry guys, hum along, have a sing song. I'm going to have to stand up. My drawer's got stuck. Come on, I just need another 
another sheet of paper. I told you it's been a mad day. <laughs> Sorry guys, right, I'll, I'll behave. Okay, so our washes then. We've got our pure Indian ink, which is wonderfully strong and black. And then I've got my wash, my dark wash, my medium wash, and my lightest wash. That medium's not very different. I'm just going to add a little bit more pigment from that one to that one. There we go. So we just like watercolour, the more water you use, the lighter the effect that you get. That's all I wanted to show you. You did the bunny and hair, but had to leave early. Did it from the recording. Where do you post? Have a look on my Facebook, Linda. Um, just scroll back to that date and you will see where I posted my pictures and everybody else posted theirs there. So just scroll back to that date. It was a few weeks ago now, wasn't it? Okay, so ink acts just like watercolour. It loves water and it will spread out. So I'm going to start with her nose and I'm just taking clean water over her nose. Any highlights, I'm going to leave dry so that the paper becomes my highlight. We don't use white, so the paper is our highlight. So I'm pre-wetting all that area of her nose, leaving some areas where there's a highlight. So at the top of her nose, under her nostril. Okay, and I'm gonna take my medium wash and just start dropping that color in Focusing around the bottom of her nose first. Just tapping in and letting that ink play around in the water. Adding a few marks further up her nose. Starting to give it some shape. Yeah, try it with watercolours, Martina. Just use watercolours, it'll be fine. I'm going to take some of my darker wash now and tap in, just tap in with the tip of my brush, tiny little puddles of ink around the bottom area of her mouth, of her nose, should I say. And watch, just like watercolour, how that ink spreads out in the water. And if you tip your board up, it will spread where you tell it to go. Just tip it and watch it run away. Okay, I'm going to take a bit more of my dark wash and just encourage, pop some more strength of tone, not colour, because it's black. Round her mouth, dancing with my brush. I like to dance with my brush, I've got no one else to dance with. <laughs> and just looking at that picture I did previously. Oh, you can't see it. Let me bring that down. Can you see her now? So really just using my previous picture as a guide. Spread in. It goes a long way. A bit more colour on the page. And then just leave it. Let it settle. Into the nostrils now. Pure Indian ink. And I didn't wet this area, so just popping that real dark ink into the curve of the nostril. Don't go where your paper is wet because it will bleed. There we go, giving her a bit of a curve and just pulling from that ink out. She has some nostrils. This is such a fun thing to do. Okay, now just like watercolour, I don't want to paint anything else that's touching the nose. If I start painting her belly here, or her jaw, that's still wet and the ink will follow. It's very obedient. Let me just show you, let me just prove the case. So here's the swatches I just did. If I bring some water up, to this black and touch into it, 
look what happens. It spreads and it follows that water. It's very obedient in that respect. Just bring some water next to it and you'll see. It loves the water and it will follow. And if that's not what you want to happen, don't go near it. Keep your paper dry. Okay, so I'm going to go to her ears next. They're not touching her nose. And again, I'm going to wet the underside of her ear with a little bit of water, leaving the bottom dry. Just a little bit of water, not too much, just enough to give the ink something to flow into. There we go. And this time, because her ears are very dark, I'm going to be brave. I'm going to go straight into my pure ink. I already have water on the paper and tap in with the very tip of my brush along that line, focusing on the section right next to her face. Watch it bleed into the water that you've already put down and come the other side. Do the same there. I mean, under that line where the skin on the back of her ear is and come in underneath. Pull that paint around, that ink around. Okay, now I want to graduate that ink. So I'm going to bring some clean water and creep up on that ink, tap into it. Look at my brush angle. It's pointing towards the ink. I'm just nudging into it and it's behaving and it's following the water and it's giving me that ombre effect. Getting slightly lighter as we come down the bottom of the ear. And the same the other side, just a bit of water on my brush, nudging the tip of the brush towards where the ink has stopped just encourage it to spread a little bit more so we get that nice gentle transition from the dark to the lighter areas of her ears she's so cute just gonna have a bit of my tea okay I'm gonna go back in with ink pen at the end with my nib pen to create some hairs okay but for now I'm happy with that other than I want to break up this line of the, the fluffy hairs, white hairs, coming over the dark. So I'm going to take my brush. I'm going to have to stand up for this or turn my board round. Oh, let's turn my board round. And I'm just going to flick some Indian ink with the very tip of my brush back into the top part of her ear to show the effect. So painting in the negative. So taking some ink back up into the white. This is great for kids as well as big kids, you know. Okay, how's her nose doing? Let me just check whether it's dry. It's not. Oh, we're stuck. Okay. <laughs> Everything's wet. I think I'm safe here. I'm going to go to the side of her face. And again, same process. Add in some water first so that I get a nice fluid flow of my ink across the areas I'm focusing on. And again, this time, pure ink, because it's dark and shadowed down here by her nose. And as soon as you put this dark alongside her nose, look what happens. Her nose juts forward as it's framed so I'm using the very tip of my brush and then teasing the paint around. Clean off any excess paint, drop back into the, where I left off and just pour that lighter colour into the water beyond. So again, I'm getting a softer colour, a softer tones, tonal value up the top. Add in a little bit extra water so it flows across her head. And the same the other side. Water first. My water's getting a bit murky. I can't see my fish so well now. So coming along, 
her ears dry so I'm safe. Make sure there's no big puddles when you put your water down. It should be a nice even coat. This time it's not quite so dark so I'm going to take my dark wash and just tap in, tap. The water is down so the ink knows where to go. Literally just use the tip of your brush. Deposit tiny little puddles of ink. Cleaning the excess off my brush. And then tapping in where I left off and pulling some ink across her face towards her eyebrow. Now, if you put too much ink down, guys, and it's too dark, remember if you're using Indian ink, you need to be quick because you can't lift out. Oh, thank you, Rachel. So you can take a damp brush, clean damp brush back in and lift out. Wipe off, lift out with a damp brush. So if it goes too dark, you do have somewhere to go. But with Indian ink, you have to act whilst it's still wet. Otherwise you're stuck with it. There's nothing you can do. With watercolours, it's different. They never permanently dry. You can always go back into watercolour, even months afterwards, re-wet it and lift colour out. But you can't do that with Indian ink. Okay, this is coming along well. Let's come down her body then. I'm going to give her... Um, let me think. I want this blob on her back to kind of bleed out. So, some parts I want solid. And as we come towards the bottom, I want it to bleed out. So I'm taking my water down her side, up to the bottom of her splodge. And she's a white and black cow, so there's not going to be much black going down here. It's just going to be light. Now, I'm not going to pre-wet the splodge. <laughs> her pattern her marking. I'm going to go straight in with pure Indian ink, leaving a little gap at the bottom of her ear. Pure Indian ink, wet onto dry paper. Painting in in the traditional way, just pulling that paint around with the tip of my brush, creating that lovely strong mark on her back quarters. And then as I come down, I've wet the paper. It will bleed a little bit and give me a softness to the bottom area. But if you don't want it to bleed, just don't pre-wet it. Okay, so I'm getting a bit of softness as we come out of her marking. I'm just going to pull that around and direct it as I see fit. There we go. Nice patch on her bottom. You can see, just like watercolour, as your ink dries back, it does get slightly lighter. So I'm going to go back in with my dark wash. A little bit more ink in there. And I just want to darken that corner of her mouth again. Darken it. My phone's binging like crazy. And then take some water. Don't leave it because you'll, you'll get a crispy line. Just a bit of water for it to spread out into. Just a bit of water nearby, softening, giving the ink somewhere to go. Fabulous, okay. Now where should we go? So her head and this part of her nose, no colour on, and the tops of her ears, I'm leaving white. So let's come down to these other blotches under her neck. Again, wet on to dry. I'm going to come under her chin. Pure Indian ink or pure watercolour. Nice and rich and creamy if you're using watercolour. And creating those splodges. Those markings down the front of Camilla, or Camilla's sister. Let's think of another name. 
your previous attempts were too heavy. People can get into the, um, Rachel, you're absolutely right. You can go too thick, too creamy, too soon with watercolours. Building up nice, soft, gentle layers is the way to go. I just want to add a few more blotches to her nose. So I'm just going to dab on. I picked up my dark wash. Some splodges, splodge to her nose. Just to give it a bit of pattern. And I'm just going to leave that wet on dry. My brush is pretty dry. I'm just picking up a little bit of ink and tapping down and creating textural marks on her nose. Okay, splodges down the bottom and a little bit of colour here and a little bit. I'm using, I'm using up all my ink, just coming down the side of her body. A little bit of a lighter wash. Some interesting marks. She needs some eyes, guys. She needs some eyes. I'm going to come up beside her nose with a very light wash of grey. There she is. Now, if you want to, in fact, today I feel, feel like making it a bit different. I'm going to take my medium wash. I'm just going to add a little bit of colour up this nose. I didn't do that before, but I fancy it today. Just a tiny bit. Just add in a hint of colour leaving some white paper showing and in her hair at the top just a light wash a bit of detail a little bit over the tops of her ears she's going to be slightly different from her sister <laughs> okay tongue her little tongue a little bit of shadow a little bit of color not color tone to one side of her tongue I hope you're having fun with your cows today. That's okay, Elaine. Do it with watercolours. You'll have just as much fun. I just felt like I wanted to show you something different today. And then I'm going to bring a bit of shadow, a little bit more ink in my puddle. I'm, I'm going wet on to dry now, guys. Wet on to dry. Coming under her tongue, adding a little bit of shadow. So that bottom lip, just touch in. If you want it darker, just tap and deposit some stronger colour. There we go, wet on to dry. And then a little bit of water added from the brush to the bottom of where your paint stops. So all we've got left to do are her eyes and her bottom chin again dark wash coming into her bottom chin right up next to her nose with her hairy chin fab okay she definitely looks a bit different to her sister, which is good. Now, again, if you want to add any more textural marks, now the nose is dry, I'm just going to do some pure ink and tap in some spots. I'm just having fun. Just having fun with you guys, watching along, painting along. There we go. Just a few more marks and texture in her nose. Okay, eyeballs. Now, if you're unsteady with your hands and you are scared of messing her up, use a pen. I'm going to come into the corner of her eye with my pen, my nib pen. Put a dark corner going in pure Indian ink into that corner section of her eye. It is, isn't it, Jolly? And then we want to leave a highlight in her eyeball. So make sure you don't block the whole eyeball in in black. We're leaving a highlight, this 
spot of light. Oh, my tummy's rumbling, guys. I haven't had my banana yet today. My tummy's telling me. I hope you can't hear it. There we go. So I've left a sliver of light between this tear duct in the corner and her iris and then left a highlight in her eyeball. Come in the other side and do the same thing. Try not to put my hand down on the wet ink. I'm going to come into the corner of her eye and then the eyeball. You can use your brush if you want, if you're confident. Nib pen's just giving me that little bit more control. Pure Indian ink for the very dark areas of her eye. Again, leaving a sliver of white between the corner of her eye and her eyeball. Okay, so to finish up, I want some more texture in my cow. So I'm going back into my ink and I'm going to scratch in or draw in some hairs and have fun with this, guys. Oh, so a blob. Did you see that? I was a bit too daring and I got a blob of ink. So I'm just going to grab a tissue, soak that up quickly. Help. Help. And just wet that out. Oh, danger, danger. So if you're quick with Indian ink, you can correct mistakes. Here we go again. I'll be careful. I was getting carried away. So I'm just putting some wispy hairs, lifting my pen off the paper as I scratch down and create the fluffiness to her ears. A few more marks on the top. Some more tufts in her hair. And again, the other ear, just scratching some longer hairs. Break up the outer line of the ear. There we go. Oh, guys, I'm a disaster today. Look what I've done. I'll just have to splatter it, won't I? Just going to try and lift that mark out. This is the trouble with Indian ink. You are pretty much stuck with mistakes. And I'm just too excitable. That's okay. I can cut it out or turn it into a tree. <laughs> so I'm going to be more careful now with my ink. And again, round her mouth, she's got whisk, little whiskers coming out to the side. See, that wouldn't happen if I use my fine liner. But if you don't take some risks and you don't try some new products, you just get stuck in a rut. So creating some whiskers. We need a name for this one, guys. So Camilla is her sister. Another flower, maybe. <laughs> and on her bottom chin, adding some tiny little, just little dashes, little ticks. But lifting your pen as you come off the page, tapering off the edge there. My phone is going mental. Okay, where have I missed? A few marks coming up her snout. And a few more hairs on her body. So, all the decision you have to make is, now, is this dark enough for the darks? If not, go back in. I'm just going to darken around there. Remember, every time you add some more ink, Daphne, Clarissa, Clara, I like Daphne, Camilla and Daphne, they kind of go together, don't they? Camilla and Daphne. Yeah, I think she's Daphne. Fabulous name. Okay, 
I'm just going to reach behind me and grab some watercolour. Um, this is obviously a dirty, dried up palette because we've got her flower to do. Um, I did yellow last time. Let's get some more colour. This is my tin and my handmade watercolours. Here we are. So I'm going to go. I need clean water and a clean brush. I'm going to go red. We're going to go red for Daphne. I'm going to use my vermilion. Just tap on the petals. Nice creamy watercolour. I want this strong. It's the one pop of colour in the painting or illustration. And then I'm going to leave the centre until that's dried and just pop a spot of um, my cadmium medium, which is a lovely egg yolk yellow in the centre once that has dried. And I'll post a picture up of Daphne later. So there we are, guys. Oh, one last thing. One last thing. A few more scratches and scribbles just in the nose just around the nostrils there we go Daphne is born she was born in front of my lovely lovely Facebook family um I did say I would show you before I dash off some other things you can do and these are just animal based so here's a little baby fox that I've done with Indian ink, obviously a bit more detailed. So you don't just have to be do fun, you can do something a bit more involved, a bit more detailed. Or from the other night when I did one of my classes last Thursday, we have our hair. It's a little bit more work, more mark making to get the texture. Um, but just explore. Start with simple and build up to more complicated images. Please, if you can, check out my list of pay to watch classes. Watercolours are on every Thursday. Watercolours or ink. And they're £10 a lesson. Um, if you fancy doing some acrylics or pastels or colour pencil work, then those classes, I mix them up. It's not the same every week. So Tuesdays, I do other mediums. And that again, they start at £10. Some of them are 12 Some of them are £15. Just depends how detailed the classes are. And if you like any of the products that you've seen me use, pop over to my product page and you'll be able to get your glasses, your pens, your brushes, your ink. So I hope you enjoyed seeing Daphne come to life and I look forward to you posting your pictures of the artwork that you've done today and send me pictures, just post them on my Facebook page of other pictures that you've done with me in my classes and where they're hanging in your homes. I'd really love to see them. We're changing our wall space and creating wonderful art. Have fun, enjoy the rest of your day everybody. As always, I will be back next Wednesday at one o'clock. Back to watercolours. Thanks guys, see you soon. Bye now, bye.